doesn't do that. Hopefully this video doesn't come out way too late. Um, I've been super, super busy today. I'm so sorry. I was intended to make this video in the afternoon, so you guys can probably prepare for, you know, if there's an inevitable J money crash tomorrow. Hey, by the way, guys, uh, I realized that J money actually worth a lot of money. <laughs> for those of you who don't know J money, as yes, Jerome Powell is the um, the chairman of Fed right now, and. Uh, you know, he's worth about 20 million to 55 million. It's actually a huge range here. But anyway, so tomorrow there's gonna be a fad minute or a fad sort of press conference that Jerome Powell is gonna come out. And, you know, a lot of media speculations and from the previous meetings that Jerome Powell, or previous press conferences Jerome Powell hosted, apparently uh, the media believe that the fad is actually gonna start you know, stop quantitative easing, which is which just means they're gonna start tapering, okay? And then for those of you who don't know what tapering is, essentially what tapering is, is the Fed is gonna slow down bond purchasing on the open market, which means by doing that, that just means uh, they're not gonna be as much cash in the market um, as of right now, okay? And uh, one of the things you have to understand is, <clears throat> we stress this over and over again on our channel, is this. So you have, where is my pen? So I heard you guys love this format, so I'm just continue this format. So first of all, right? So what's the effect of known tapering? So what's the effect of quantitative easing? So let's just say this is um, bond yields, and then this is maturity. Um, regularly speaking, you know, the higher, um, the maturity things that is the higher the yield, right? It goes like this, okay. But when the Fed decided to intervene, they're sort of when they start quantitative easing, it literally flattens the um, yield to maturity curve like this. So when they stop quantitative easing or slow down and start taper, then this curve will go back to this this part. That means the f of x, which is the slope of this curve. Uh, it's gonna go back to normal or even goes more volatile like this. So for those of you who don't understand math and who don't care about math and who don't care about, you know, calculus, like 90% of my viewerships, here's the thing I'm gonna tell you. So if taper happens, all right, let's go. One, ah. if taper happens tomorrow, we're gonna face one of those two things. One is, sharp market correction on heavily debted industries. What does it mean? Heavily debted industry. If you go and look at these companies' balance sheets, they're gonna have, you know, they're gonna utilize debt about 50% of their entire asset level. That means, let's just say, so the example would be, let's just say you have um, $100 million in total asset, in total asset and then at least 60% of those of those assets are some form of debt, right? I was gonna give you guys an example, but apparently there aren't, and I can't really pull something out of my mind real uh, this quick of someone who utilized 60% of their assets are debt. I mean, it's actually really smart in the, the period of quantitative easing, actually, because debts are really cheap. The cost of debt is really, really cheap, right? And, uh, or you will see market, AKA SPY, go ham as usual. But then there is gonna be a sharp correction in five trading days. I mean, this thing happens over and over again. I don't really want to explain it. Basically, um, during a, well, in, psycho in psychology, we call this a symptoms of delayed um, dystopia, or, or you're still in the euphoric stage of everybody thinks that the market is going fine, blah, blah, blah. I mean, it is, okay? So it is in a way. So how, so how, does, so how does taper affect us as investors? So A is we need to be careful with how much of a small cap position position we hold. 
Why? Because a lot of small cap stocks actually had a lot of debt. So you want to mitigate debt operating operating stocks. What do I mean by debt operating stocks? That means it needs monthly debt to cover daily operations. Those are bad. That means their operating costs are gonna increase over time and their revenue is gonna decrease. Um, and then their in that income is gonna decrease, bam, 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 earning decreases, right? We, we wanna avoid those. And C is we wanna add local banks and just banks in general into our medium term. Pro, pro, pro portfolio. Okay. Why? Because, well, when taper happens, that means the longer end of the interest rates slope is going to go up. That means in, in when the bank is doing a loan package and selling to someone or bank is doing loan structuring, that means every single loan that can squeeze out more profit and the cost of interest will increase. So the bank's profit would increase. Okay. And what does it mean by infl what does it do to inflation? Well, technically speaking, it does eh, a fair amount because it signals signals interest interest hike if inflation still sustain current level. Okay, but but here, here's the more interesting thing, okay? But in reality, it actually doesn't really do anything. <laughs> in reality, it does not do anything, anything to inflation. Why? Because, because it does not change the fundamental supply and demand of commodities commodities like do you do you guys understand why the reason oil is going so high is because supply and demand doesn't match right there's a mismatch between supply and demand the reason why the timber is gonna you know go up again and maybe iron is gonna stabilize and maybe go down again it's it's literally because um, there's a mismatch in oil supply and demand and then because oils we are you know ships are still running on oil we don't have electrical ships yet because we cannot provide uh, that big of a battery and make ships electric so that's one of the problems and uh electric cars sort of doesn't really deliver that much of uh, commodities overseas so you need either planes or you need ships so it doesn't really do anything and then all the ev hype only helps local economy it doesn't help global economy so if using that logic it doesn't really do anything unless there's the actual uh, interest rate hike but when there's an interest rate hike there's also some other problems coming out because right now our physical policy in the United States, which means the policy that Congress is going to implement next year is directly in conflict with our monetary policy, which is what Fed wants to do with our money market. Anyways, without making this uh, video too hefty and too much or, or taking too much of your time. So how do you hedge? How do you hedge against a J money crash? So let's just say tomorrow scenario A happens, right? Uh, there's gonna be a soft correction or whatever. Then how are you gonna do that? So first of all, uh, if you look at SPY, one of the most brutal way of doing this is you actually bet SPY would go flat. What are you gonna do? Is you're gonna sell puts on SPY. This is one of the things you can actually do. Um, well, actually you will do a put. You will, you will do actually a put spread. Um, and then you sort of like figure out like what sharp correction that would go go to and then you do that and another thing is you can actually sell calls that uh, 
Very brutal ways you can, you can actually sell calls or short sell SPY. But that's kind of really risky because it's been going up for what? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 14 days. Okay. The probability of something like go of 14 days that are independent, let's assume that you have a 0.52% of going up and 0.48% of going down. Actually, we need more data collection to actually figure out how many days SPY goes up and go down. And then we'll utilize that probably in the next video to figure out i will tell you guys the statistics of like the probability of actually go down tomorrow it's actually pretty high by the way um so what are some easier ways to do it well there's a thing called vix okay vix measures the market volatility um ahead and whenever there's a sharp downturn and the market volatility will come up and then look at vix it's almost at 52 um the 52 so a year's low is 14.1, which is almost impossible to reach at this point, um, but it reaches 14.84 at one point. And then if you look at a lot of the, the short-term VIX contracts and look at all of the VIX um, charts, you will realize that, hey, um, VIX is actually gonna have a little run by the end of this week. So tomorrow might be a good time to get some VIX calls. And if tomorrow the market sharply turned down, then the VIX is gonna spike. And then if you buy the $16, $17, or the $20 call, then you're looking at a hefty return, 50%, 60%. But again, we're batting on the market isn't correct, right? If the market doesn't correct, then you know what it is. AMC, we don't really want to talk about AMC right now, but AMC is actually a way how you can hedge against market downturn because whenever the market is correcting itself, Usually meme stocks actually, it actually goes the opposite way. So, so you see today, like you, you will see like the later on, on the SPY sort of like um, by the end of the market, it sort of goes all time high and prepares for a, like a very high start tomorrow and maybe have a, a sharp downturn, right? Um, but if you look at AMC, the aftermarket, everything is going up and up and up. But again, like we were going to make a video about it's really good time to enter AMC like a day ago or today for the $40 call option because of the earnings ahead. And because there are a lot of people actually watching movie in a movie theater right now. And there are a lot of um, promotional stuff going on. And what is great is concession. Like a lot of the concession sales are increasing. And for those of you who know about movie business, you will know that concession shall goes, goes to increase, go directly into the revenue stream. But anyways, these are irrelevant. For those of you who just want to hatch for market downtrend, you should look for VIX and VXX. Okay. And another one, another thing you can do is SQQQ. But when you buy into SQQQ, what you're really betting on is you're betting on that um, the core aspects of NASDAQ will all go down. Okay, like, you know, people are going to sell Tesla, people are going to sell everything, like everything, like every tech in Tesla, uh, in NASDAQ. And another thing is UVXY. So how does UVXY works is we have futures contracts on traded, right? So whenever there's a huge VIX spike, this is actually leveraged. So that means if you buy a $16 call for tomorrow or for by the end of this week and tomorrow all of a sudden the VIX actually go up to the point that we have, that means UVXY would actually go up to about $18. And then because it's a leveraged ETF that you will make even more, per, more percentage than the VIX. So what did we do today? Well, first of all, we sold a lot of stuff that we think is a little bit overvalued right now. We add up some bank stocks well, because guys, we talk about it, right? Taper, if taper is real, taper is happening, then bank will benefit ultimately, okay? So if 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 that's the if that's the case, then we added some bank stocks, and then on um, Patreon we sort of talk about some other stock that we think is gonna have a run tomorrow. Um, and then that we added a little bit and we contract most of our positions, load up some, some UVXY, load up some X, uh, VXX, just maybe one or two contracts, small contracts, small positions, and uh, load up some oil contracts, natural gases, and we're done with it. Because the commodity market is actually going to perform a little bit stable than the equity market if taper actually happens. Anyways, hopefully you guys love this video. See you guys on the upside and smash a like button for us, please.